And but in fact, there's one thing to do with this book. Uh, <laughs> rather than buy it and feather his greedy little nest, do what I'm going to do right now. Take spare and chuck it where it belongs, in the bin. Take it away, Tim. Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ for 30 yeah, pieces yeah, of silver. Yeah. This bloke has betrayed the Queen, yeah. his brother, his father, the future mm -hmm. Queen, the Queen Cons, for tens of millions of pounds. It's all about money. His sense of entitlement is staggering. Harry's a very, very stupid man, a man with a barely functioning IQ in the sort of middle 90s who in real life wouldn't be able to get a job or sort of have a family or do anything, who's been pumped into public life by the accident of his birth. And now, with no advisors, nobody has been so ill-advised, unraged, since Ethelred himself in the royal family has, has had such so little backing. He's now doing a tour of America, lashed from pillar to post by these grasping publishers who've made a complete mess of it by leaking the book and diminishing sales, so he's not going to make the money he planned to. Mm. He's now being lashed from pillar to post around America, and they are mocking and humiliating him, and nobody is saying, Harry, don't do this, Harry, stop, and he's arriving and he's doing these sketches. I've been on chat shows, not in America, but I've done sort of Jonathan Ross and mm. Wogan and things like that when I've been promoting it, and they make me look a fool, and I'm quite clever. It is ghastly at every level. Can you imagine trashing your own family, trashing your own country, trashing the Commonwealth, trashing your grandmother's legacy when she was the late Queen Elizabeth, and doing it all for money? I think the whole thing, frankly, is despicable. I don't doubt that Harry has got some difficult mental issues, but to do this to your own family, to reveal every little private detail and conversation. I can't imagine any human being ever sinking lower than this hmm. in terms of trust and respect. And I'm pleased to say that the opinion polls in Britain show that Harry, who at one point had an 80% popularity approval, that has now dropped to 26% and it will go lower. And I sense the same thing's happening in the USA hmm. too. I clash very, very heavily with parts of the media during COVID and the misrepresentation of certain things and the hiding of other things. But at the end of the day, he's wrote this and he said this in his book and his audio book. You can't deny it. So it's astonishing to me. And what what gets me is that he's gone from a really likeable, almost relatable royal, you know, brave army soldier, to suddenly a whinging woke crybaby Every time he comes on, I just want to turn him off. I, I actually, it's quite a, uh, a, a strong word, but I think I hate, I hate mm. Harry. But for what he's doing mm. to the UK. They need to be healed. I'm traumatized by Harry and Meghan. Trauma. I'm sorry. Well, I you need to be healed too, I guess. They've got no right to be traumatized. They're the ones doing all the attacking and bullying for two years now. Hurt people do hurtful things. They're hurt not people hurt, they're hurt making hundreds of millions people. of dollars. Well, money doesn't solve pain. Clearly. It's not really. Clearly, not. because Harry still... what they're doing? Yeah, but Elvida, clearly it doesn't, because Harry yeah. still looks utterly miserable. I'm not suggesting he's as bad as Hitler, but it is like reading Mein Kampf, in that Hitler thinks he's a great hero, and you put the book down with absolute disgust, and you do put this book down with total disgust at the self-pity, self-indulgence uh, of this character. Really, some of the great writers of the 20th century, like Nabokov, <clears throat> would have really appreciated about this book. It's written by the, by the ghosts, and the, the voice it's meant to be, namely Harry, um, is much cleverer than the real Harry. I mean, he tries to read Hamlet because his father's a passionate Shakespearean, and then he, he finds this man who's in love with his mother and is resentful about a parent's remarriage and so on. Uh, that's, that's too near the bone. I've got some dog biscuits in a dog bowl that isn't China, cos no dog bowl in any royal household is China, although Harry says, oh, I've thrown it myself now. If you mentioned on this show the word Harry, you've got a dog biscuit no, lined at you, OK? And I happening. heard you might mention it, so I'm going to take aim across the studio. Well, no, mention without mentioning his name, all I would say was a certain jumped-up little prince <laughs> went on an American chat show last night, oh, wow. once again attacking his family, once again, very oddly, blaming the evil, lying British media for all the things that came out of his own mouth in his book. I, I'm rather saddened by it for him. I'm saddened by it for the royal family that, um, you know, this is a, a, an episode, a story that they didn't need. And, um, you know, people talk about revelations. And, and actually what we're hearing is a sort of an airing of 
his problems publicly uh, that include his father, include his brother, and, and, and other members of the royal family. And like any airing of anyone's problems, any, any chance of a reconciliation seems now to be faded fast, because if you're going to reconcile a problem, you need to do it privately. You don't do it like this. How can you trust him? And you know what? That's why he must not come to the coronation. He will try to benefit from it. And it all goes to show you how wise the late Queen was. She refused to pose for a photograph with Lilibet, their latest child, because she knew those two would use it to make money. Another very glaring error, which which Piers may have uh, spoken about, was the uh, the announcement of the death of the Queen Mother, which Harry's... I mean, I'd just flown back from close to myself, having been filming William and Harry and Charles on, on the ski slopes at Closters, and I just got back and touched down at the airport to be told the Queen Mother was, was, was dying, and she died within a couple of hours of that, so I knew <laughs> damn well that um, Harry was on the ski slopes, and yet he has... Do you know, can we, can we maybe think that he just... Uh, his brain is so addled by, well by the trauma of his uh, of his life, because he is traumatised, um, by the many, many drugs he's taken. Perhaps he just does not have a clear memory. He says his memory is, is pretty blurred about most things. If I was the MOD, I would sue Penguin Books for re releasing very important and serious information. Such as? What do you think of that? Such Sorry? as? What, what's, well, what? the, the, about what was written, about that, you know, uh, how many people... You well, know, if he's stupid he, enough to him. talk about it... He, he's the one who's... T no, no, but penguins I mean, have got... No, they've got some sort no, of... No, 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 no. I mean, if he's stupid enough, and I'm that's word, by the way, of a senior military man, not me. If he is stupid enough to say it, then they're going to publish it. Marin, thank you. But, of course, it's not his fault. Of course it's not. It's the media that picked up on the words that he wrote. You talk about the importance of actually not blaming the world for your yeah. problems, but looking into your own back garden. Yeah. That's a conversation you could have with Harry, because he doesn't accept any responsibility for anything that's gone wrong in his life. It's, th everything's everyone else's fault. I, I think, but also, I think it's very important with, with that to get your own, your own view and own narrative across. You know, worrying about things you can, you can control, you know. He can only tell his story. You know, when you're in a position like that, people always have comments, and you don't... Because, you know, never complain, never explain. And, and everything is open to interpretation. The very fact that, for example, two or three of the things he said, taken out of context, were sensationalised, shows exactly what he's saying. So then when you read the actual copy of the book, you realise that it's contextual, you realise it's his side of the story, and I think mm -hmm. he's on a journey to worry about kind of himself and what he wants to do, and he's put a marker down. All he will do is cast a shadow over his father's, re his father's reign. I mean, I, you know, I'm an exact contemporary of Charles university i've always had a soft corner for him i think there are weaknesses particularly in the way he's handled family matters but he has um uh, the real asset is he cares about issues and he's been ahead of the game on a lot of issues he cannot allow his reign to be messed up by this errant son and his uh, what would you do wife. if you were him with harry I think I would probably say he can come to the coronation while making it clear that if he comes you know, he'll be in row Z. And, look, Harry deserves no favours from the royal family or from Britain. Mm. They're contradicting themselves all the time now. Harry and Meghan's spiderweb of lies, distortions and falsehoods is now so complicated, even they can't keep up.